Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to the upper tier. This is our FA Cup final preview. Uh, here with me tonight, I have in the blue corner, Mr. Ian Kensington Kelly. <laughs> and representing the, the Chelsea corner, Roar, of course, dual Rap podcast. Representing the Chelsea Roar and in the red corner, representing the Shankly Sessions. It is Noel, the Scouts are Hogan. How are we, Darren? How are we, lads? All good. Good to have you, lads. Uh, I'm kind of, uh, kind of feel like I'm in the wrong spot here tonight, lads. But listen, I'll, I'll keep it going and we'll see how we get on, right? Because uh, usually I'm the one <laughs> doing all the yapping. But this evening I'm going to sit back and let you two boys at each other, yeah? I don't expect that to change, in fairness. See you not? <laughs> no, we'll I don't. Not at see. all. We'll have to wait and see. And um, Just for anyone that's, that's uh, listening or watching tonight, Please don't forget, hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, the upper tier, and you'll get us on Spotify, Google Podcast, and Amazon Music. All right, don't forget, like, subscribe, and share. Hit that subscribe button, lads. We're, we're, we're looking for subscribers here, lads. All right, and we've got content going up every other day of the week. We've got new shows on the way over the summer and coming into next season. Some big stuff planned for the upper tier. So, Bill of Us, you know, Bill of Us for our, our new host. Yeah, hundred percent. I'll have to record my own version of this now. I thought this was a dual podcast, but sure, look, we'll go with it. <laughs> we'll, we'll run with it. We'll run with it for now. So, we'll lads, I'll tell you what I'm going to do first, because I wanted to just talk about first the road to the FA Cup final. Yeah. So I, I had a little look earlier on. I was doing my homework and all. Of you. You'd, be, you'd be proud of me here, Noel. I did a little bit of homework. Now, the first thing I I I can find when I look at the road to the. Uh, to the FA Cup final for you lads it was a handy enough road mouth for the way wasn't it basically till the semis I mean, well, I'm sorry no not the semis we, probably till the quarters yeah so I mean let's let's just touch on Liverpool first Liverpool obviously kicked off against Shrewsbury all the way back there in uh, in February I think it was late late January February uh, they were 4-1 winners at Shrewsbury and um, they followed that up with a, with a 3-1 victory at Cardiff and um, they moved on to, to Norwich. It was a 2-1 win at Norwich. Uh, and then we got to the quarterfinals, the business end of proceedings, where they were away at Knott's Forest and got a 1-0 victory. And then in the semi-final, they overcame the Manchester City Reserves uh, 3-2. Yeah. So, I mean, until the semi-final, it was quite a comfortable route. It was a nice draw, would you say, Noel? I'd say until the quarters, Nottingham Forest were banging form. As you know, they took a number of Premier League scalps, as you well know. Um, so I'd say, yeah, probably as far as the quarters. And well, I suppose I don't know because they didn't take our scalp. But no, no, but as you well know, being the host, that's, that's 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 to come next. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I, th- I think um, I think we'll um, <laughs> um, that the Man City reserves, I think, is is a bit of a. You know, I, I think the Man City reserves are good enough to finish top four in this Premier League anyway. So fucking okay, nonsense. Uh, it's a nonsense. little bit uh, not with that it's a, it's a little it's a, it's a little bit of a throwaway <laughs> keeper in fairness. <laughs> yeah. The goalie and, and was it, the one that let you down, yeah. The goalie. I like that. You even brought in the American term, the goalie. Um I do love the Yanks now, nothing against them. I'm just saying the Absolutely goalies aren't great. We, we, we love the, way the Yanks. Things are, the way things are going, you could be signing them next year if you're a reserve keeper. More than likely. It'd be better than Kepa. <laughs> we love the Yanks, but God, that keeper was dreadful. You know, the Chelsea roar. You guys roared into that semi final with a, a 5 1 victory at Chesterfield, followed up by a 2 1 victory at Plymouth. That was it. We made tough work of that one. <laughs> that was after extra time. That was a tough day at the office end. Yeah. We had a, we had, do you know what? I have to say that the next round was a tough round as well. You guys went to Kenilworth Road and it was a 3 2 victory away at Luton. Another yeah. tough day at the office. And yeah. um, we, we might gloss over the quarterfinals because they, you put out the mighty Middlesbrough who dumped United out on their sword. We avenged, um, we avenged United. We we said, listen, Middlesbrough, avenged, you can't be you can't be beating these traditional teams on earth or fuck off. No, we're coming, no. we're coming to the riverside. And then you follow that up with it with a good two two nil victory in that semi-final. And um, not not the most taxing um you know route to the final, but you know, you still gotta be five teams along the way, you still gotta go to places that you you, you maybe don't necessarily go in the league 
And you've also got to share the games out among some of the squad players as well. Am I right? Yeah, and I'd say one thing. We had a, you know, Liverpool, you know, they kind of, in all their cup runs, they've kind of had an easy run, whereas, like, we had a difficult one in the Champions League and all. I don't want to say that in here, but you know what I mean? Um you know, Liverpool just kind of well, are the only, Villarreal. The only, but... thing I'll, the only thing I'll garnish that is garnish that with is nobody's a, has a tougher run than Real Madrid in their defense. Exactly. That's so, true. So you know, we've got. Well, we would have been in that here, position yeah. if they hadn't beat us. So you know what I mean? It's just, it's the same thing. Me, me, Andy would have been my uncle if she'd have set a balls. So you know, Do you know what hindsight and coulda, shoulda, woulda is a wonderful yeah. thing. I agree. Yeah. You have to Absolutely. beat what's in front of you. In fairness. Just, I just I just listened to the teams there that Chelsea went through on route to Wembley. Yeah. And I'm thinking, you turned around and said, we had a handy draw. Come on. Yeah, but we Champions knocked League. Out, we no, no, we no, knocked no. out Man City in the semis. No, I, you beat Man City Reserve, but you absolutely yes. had an equally an, an equal an equally uh, even number of uh, lower league games to play. Let's you say. know what? You, you beat a Man City semi. You didn't meet a, beat a fucking Man City full on. So, <laughs> played them off the park as well for about 65 minutes. I had that there as well. Man City's kids had, did okay, and though. then had squeaky bum time at the end because you were 3 2 up. I went yeah, into man. the jacks for the last 25. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> 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 Lad, Here, listen, you we, we, made, we made tough work of fucking Plymouth. That's all I'll say. <laughs> I'll I'll put it this way on our WhatsApp group, I was very vocal for 65 minutes <laughs> and I was very quiet for 25 minutes, as pointed out by both you guys. <laughs> Happens to the best of <laughs> us, pal. Happens to the best of us. Noel, touch on key men for me here for Liverpool. Who's the two men that have to step up on Sunday for you guys to lift that FA Cup? I suppose depending on what front three he goes with, but Salah since the AFCON has been horrific. His form has been terrible. Um, and he needs a big performance. Um, and Jota the same as well. I think Jota's form was kind of indifferent in the first half of the season, but reasonable. I think he was pretty good when he stepped in during the AFCON. And yeah. I think once the boys came back then, he's gone totally off the boil as well. Seems to have run out of ideas. Seems to be dropping. Both those boys, in fairness, seem to be dropping a lot of five these days in the ratings. You'll see them on the Shanky Sessions there. We do them after every show or after every match. But I think both those boys, pending if Jada plays or starts, I think they both need to step up. Um, but my biggest concern was, obviously, we lost Fabinho for the final. And obviously, Ian will touch on Kovacic as well, who I know who's going to be fitting. I think he's back in training tomorrow, which is a huge plus for Chelsea, but a real concern for me because I know when Fabinho is not in there, I think our midfield against a good Chelsea side could be quite porous and I'd be concerned about that. And he, I, I didn't hear you mention him, but I want to just throw something into the mix. You know, do you think this is a huge game for Trent? Because, you know, Trent's going to more than likely come up against Mason Mount. He's probably one of the tougher players he plays against week to week in that Premier League. You know, we know Trent at times can be, you know, Liverpool's best player. We know he also leaves himself exposed at times. And do Chelsea have enough in a Mason Mount and maybe a Marcus Alonso going down that left-hand side to cause trouble for Liverpool and for Trent? Can I just, can I just, 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 just a quick one there. Um, Mason is more than likely going to be on the right hand side so I think I think it's going to be more so Pulisic or Coy on that one there because they tend to play on the left Mason tends to float on the right he's the floater isn't he he's yeah. the floater and that's so, what scares I, me about Mason Mount he seems to he seems to pop up an awful lot on the left though he you, does you that's what that, I mean he does float if you yeah. watch the Carabao Cup game all of the chances came to him tucking in from the left hand side on his right foot and, and, and that's you know while he might have that freer role I think he may they may try and Overload, the overload, Trent. Overload, yeah, Trent. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and I'm fairness, sorry, I wasn't, I wasn't yeah. trying to correct your hand. I was just yeah. saying, just judging right, on the last right, few. Ian. Now you're rolling. Shut your yeah. mouth, you brownie. Now. <laughs> yeah, I'm no, no, now. In terms of, I mean, if you talk about Mason Mount, I mean, he's he's the one out of the whole of the Chelsea side that scares me the most because yeah. at times he's unplayable. You've seen it in the Carabao Cup. He could have had a hat trick. There's no doubt about it. And I think as well, the way he floats around and the way he moves, he just has that knack of being in the right position at the right time in key moments. And he's kind of unmarkable as well because he'll move across three or four different players. 
and you're kind of trying to adjust to mark a new player kind of thing. So he kind of catches you off your guard at times. And uh, look, he's a fabulous footballer. There's no doubt about it. He's an excellent player. And he's he's like, he's the one I fear the most in the Chelsea side, Mason Mount. Pretty good. I like it. Ian, talk to me. Key men for Chelsea at the weekend. Who, who are you looking at to stand up and perform? Now, obviously, we've seen a little bit of a resurgence over the last couple of games from Lukaku. And first of all, do you think he'll go with Lukaku? Or do you think he'll go with Havertz? And then tell us about your, your two key men who, who have to step up on Sunday for Chelsea to lift that FA Cup. Well, it's a good question because I can kind of answer two of those questions in one. I think Lukaku is the one that needs to step up now in the big game because I do think he's going to go with Lukaku. I think Lukaku's earned it, in fairness, in the last couple of games. Um, he definitely is one that needs to step up and, and, and step up in the sense that keep that run of form going but also step up in the big games. We saw when he came on in the Carabao Cup, the controversy of that offside goal with the fingernail and all that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Um, you saw how he finished that fucking immaculately. And I mean, if that goal is given, I know, Niall, you actually mentioned that to me on a call shortly after. If that goal is given and it's the winner, um, which it, it very possibly could have been, again, could have, should have, would have. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying here now, I'm not trying to cause debate here. I'm just saying if that happens... Could be a very different Lukaku we're talking about from then to now. However, he has stepped up in a time of need um, in the last couple of games. And I think he needs to step up now, you know, in a cup final stage and show, you know, that that he, he was worth the butter, so to speak. Um, go ahead, Dazzler. I know you want has, to ask has, has Tuchel been clever here, Ian? Has he given mm -hmm. him that little bit of rope in the last couple of games? and dangled that carrot in front of him and just said, you know what, if you can show me enough over the next couple of games, if you can get in the score sheet, if you can prove to me you're the Romelu Lukaku that Chelsea Football Club paid out all that money for, I'll get you a spot in that starting eleven. I believe so. Um, I don't know whether you boys watched the game last night, but there was a moment where the commentators thought that Lukaku was coming off and, Luke, and Tuca was looking at him. Like Vinnie Mack used to look at Shawn Michaels and, and the boys revving them up before they went out on, you know, out, out for their entrance. And you saw that, Noel, did you? Yeah. And he's looking at him and he's eyeballing them and he's talking to him and it, you could see him psyching him up. And apparently what was said was like, you're scoring. You're scoring today. You're scoring. So there's been obviously work in the background there with Tuchel on Lukaku. Um, and yeah. If, if, if it works out from now till the end of the season, then it's a stroke of genius on, on, on Tuchel's side. And um, great fucking man management in terms of a great man managing, management in a difficult situation that Lukaku put the club in um, early on. And if it all pays off at the end of the season, all will be forgotten. Now, there is two sides of the coin. Is Lukaku playing for a move in the summer to kind of you know, get out of the club? Or is he kind of now in a position where he's going, do you know what? New owners, new start. I actually like this, this because uh, the, the fans have been very much behind them, even the away fans. And as you know, Dazzler, the away fans are usually the ones that matter. <laughs> if they're singing your name at the end of the game, it's, it's, it's generally because they like you. Yeah, and, and I suppose... Like we know, and, and, and I hear what you're saying about the Lukaku thing and, and Tuchel and that. And I suppose we know the talent that he has. Yeah. You know, we know at times the lad is unplayable, but there's definitely an issue there with, with his attitude and with his application. Mentality. Mentality. And, you know, mentality. And we talk about, you know, we hear it from Klopp all the time mentality monsters, you know, and they've, they've kind of coined yeah. that phrase for themselves. And, and it is something that I like the idea of what Tuchel is doing there. And, and the way he's speaking to him and saying, you know, now's your time. It's time to step up. Here's your opportunity. If it works, you know, it goes this way. If it doesn't work, you know, we, we go again. He's not necessarily pulling the plug on him. So, yeah, listen, I think that's a great, it's a great, um, it's great man management from Thomas Tuchel, isn't it? Yeah, and he's the one that needs to step up now and show that he can actually do what, you know, his idol, Didier Drogba, done in cup finals. I mean, this was Drogba's cup, you know what I mean? Um, Wembley was his was his fucking playground. So 
Um, and Liverpool know all about that, and that, that's not a that's not a joy at all. It's, it's no, just, no, that's it's, yeah. It's, um, and then the, the second player that I think needs to step up, um, you'll probably be surprised with this one. It's not an outfield player. It's it's Mendy. Mendy needs to step up big time because there are serious question marks over Mendy and not over his future. And I'm not saying that. I'm not I'm not fickle enough to say, oh, we need to go and buy a new keeper now because we have a new owner. But you can't just ride the crest of a wave because of what you've done last year and early on in the season. You know what I mean? And I understand he's a confidence goalkeeper. And Dazzler, I know you're 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 the man uh, for this conversation. He, he you know, when we talk about Allison and Eduardo and Courtois, very much so Courtois, um, even though he's a reptile, uh, <laughs> you know, these are world-class goalkeepers who are not confidence players because I am of the firm belief that if you are world-class, you're not a confidence player. You're a no. player that can just switch it on and do it. I think Mendy has shown that he's just a level below that world-class level. Um, yeah, I, I, you know you know what I think happened personally? Yeah. I think when he came into Chelsea, there was a there was an initial, you know, riding the crest of the wave and he, he made a couple of stops and stuff like that and he built himself up to feel like he was six feet taller I did or, very well. Yeah. He did yeah. do well. But I think he has his limitations. And I think, you know, when, when everything's kind of falling away behind the scenes and, and he's lost, maybe the wind has come out of sails a little bit. He's kind of, you know, he's found his level, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And I think it's probably, as you said, it's just below where Chelsea might want their first goalkeeper to be. Um, I, I actually yeah. had it, you know, I had a conversation with a Chelsea fan last summer. And, and I fully expected Chelsea to go and buy a goalkeeper. And and they didn't, obviously. And they kept Mendy and, you know, and stuff like that. I, I think he's ideal for number two. But I think in the next year or two, you could see Chelsea go out and look for number one. Maybe not so. this summer, but I think later on in it. Uh, Ian, let yeah. me just go over to Noel because I just want to just want to touch on something here, Noel, with, um, with obviously the roles of the two managers. You know, we've spoken about Tuchel and about, um, you know, his role with Lukaku. Where where does Klopp stand on this? You know, who's who's he going to be? Whose ears are he going to be in before Saturday night? You know, because there is, as you said, a couple of guys who haven't quite hit their straps of late. Jota, eh, Sad, eh, Mohamed Salah and stuff like that, you know? Well, obviously, Henderson would be a big one. I assume Henderson is going to start with Fabinho being out. He's our captain and stuff like that, so you would expect him to slot in there. But he, he'll be certainly in his ear because that, that's a kind of... I think we've seen with Jordan Henderson as well. I mean, his his form has um, slipped greatly as well in matches this season. Um, and then at times he he has slotted in and he's been really good. But that that kind of that shadowing of the back four role is not necessarily a role that he's overly comfortable with. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the role he's going to end up playing. I assume the midfield is going to be Jordan, and then ahead of him is going to be Thiago and Keita. That's what I assume he's going to go with. Looking at it at the moment. Is is um, is that a worry for you that midfield? Totally is a worry. I mean, when Fabinho is out of the team, it's a worry to me no matter who slots up. It's a matter to and me. And they'll uh, and they'll probably go up against are we saying Kante and Kovacic? I, I yeah. No, no, I would I would have thought Jorginho and Kovacic. Jorginho, and Jorginho, Jorginho was uh, was was, okay. was actually do you know what Dazzler last night he was actually fantastic against Leeds. He, he, and and the only reason I say Kante is I, I, I believed if he started Kante last night we'd have seen Jorginho. Whereas I think if, if he starts Jorginho last night, I think maybe he's holding Kante for, for a certain. Well no, Kante was still injured, you see. Yeah. So that that, that that's why he's I think Jorginho's okay. nailed on to play regardless. Um, okay. it just depends. It's either it's a flip of a coin of Kovacic or Kante, I'd imagine. Which yeah. either of them on form you would yeah. you know what I mean. And and you're you're you know you're confident in that midfield going in against against Thiago Henderson and and uh, Kate, are you? Listen, we, we like this midfield went in and won the Champions League against some of the best last year. You know what I mean? Uh, and and has as um, went in against Liverpool in, in you know in two Premier League games and the League Cup and stood toe to toe. So I think both both set of mid both sets of midfielders have enough respect. When you take away the banter and you take away all of the, you know, all of the kind of gimmicks, um, both of those teams absolutely respect each other, uh, including the coaches. And I think, you know, I'd be very naive to turn around and say, oh, yeah, that's a perfect midfield. We're not afraid of the Liverpool midfield. Of course, listen, 
but I, but I think I think it works both ways. I think both sets of midfielders, you know, it it, it can really um it can really go either way on the day. Yeah, I think, I think when you look at the Premier League table and we say like that the table doesn't lie, but I think in this case it slightly does because if you look at Chelsea and you look at Liverpool, the gap in the league is quite, it's big, you know? Huge. But, but, but yeah. when you look at Chelsea and Liverpool on their day in a one-off game and you look at it this season, they've both matched up very, very even. There's been very little in it except decisions and moments in games. And, and I'm, the, the other thing I worry about in that midfield, Darren, as well, that we haven't mentioned either, is Loftus-Cheek. Loftus-Cheek would worry me as well. His power and his strength and his movement in that midfield would worry me if he's up against a, a Keita. And I've also noticed with us as well, when we don't have that Fabinho role there shadowing that back four, sometimes our midfield pushes too far forward and there's a gap between our back four and our midfield that Chelsea have been able to exploit this year. And what it does, it exposes our back four because Fabinho isn't there doing the mopping up yeah. and Henderson is nowhere near the level of Fabinho in terms of mopping up those balls at that time. I mean, he, he, he sets the screen in front of that back four, doesn't he? Yeah. And, yeah. You know, th- th- there's very few in the league that, that play the role as well as him, for my money, I have to say. Um, I think he's I think he's super sitting in front of that back four, creating that little diamond with the or, or that little triangle between the two centre backs, you know, and linking the whole thing together. Um, but but Noel, you know, do you think I have to be careful how I phrase this? Do you feel like you owe Chelsea one a little bit this season? Have you let them off the hook a couple of times? No, I don't think so. I think if you look at the results this season, I think Chelsea have been full value for what's happened. I don't think so at all. I think if you look at the game at Anfield, I think Chelsea were in control of that game up until the Reese James sending off. We grew into the game a little bit. But then look at what Chelsea did. They totally, they drove us insane down to 10 men and we couldn't break them down. If you look at the game at the bridge, we scored two really good goals. We had a some control of the game, but Chelsea still had great possession and stuff like that. Kovacic popped up with a worldie that got them back into the game. And two then, worldies almost, wasn't yeah, it really? Absolutely. Though, yeah. And then when you think about it, then it was again, it came out as a fairly even game. If you look at the Carabao Cup, the Carabao Cup was hinged right. It was a penalty shootout, which can go any way at all. I think Hook and Mendy for Kepa was a really bad move. I, I don't think it was the I right agree. thing to do. Yeah. But I think in that game as well, there was moments in that game. Chelsea were very unlucky with some of the chances they had. We created a few chances. As Ian said, the Lukaku chance could have went either way. And I, I think there's so little between both these teams. And I think even in terms, if you look at Klopp and you look at Tuchel, I know the gap in the league. But if you look at what Chelsea have had to put up with this year compared to us, it's no surprise that that gap is in the league in terms of the consistency. I, in terms I of one off final games, there's when, nothing when I When I say you feel like you've let them off the hook a little bit, obviously I'm taking into account the fact you're playing 10 men at Anfield and you probably feel like you should go on and win the game, you know, and then you're tuning it up away at the bridge and again you drop. You know, if we look at those two results in isolation, those results could be the results that cost you a league title this year. It so, could be, but I, I, don't, I don't think that's necessarily... I, I don't think... You could argue... I don't think it was a case of us letting, che- you know, letting che- Chelsea off the hook. I think Chelsea played themselves with really good play back into those games and stuff like that. The defending that they did on Anfield was unbelievable. It's as good a defensive um, showing as you'll see from any team. And what we do forget about Chelsea as well, they are European and world champions at the moment, regardless of how the season has panned out. Diago Silva so, that day at Anfield was was different level. Unbelievable. But yeah. I think Ian, I think both banks of four in were unbelievable. Oh no, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. Ian, yeah. is there a worry that of late those defensive performances haven't been there for Chelsea? Um, I'll tell you what. <clears throat> Last night. If you if you if we were having this conversation now before last night, I would have answered yes. Um, now, I do believe Chelsea have always been a team. In fact, Chelsea since as long as I've been supporting them, as long as my dad has been supporting them, have always been a cup team. Even in the air, even in the mid nineties when Glenn yeah. Hoddle first took over and Ruud Hullet. and Luca Vialli, Ruud Hullet, yeah, yeah absolutely. We were, Always a top team. Team. We're always there, thereabouts. Even winning the cup winners cup in '98, not taking into account winning the 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 uh, FA Cup before. That. Always been a cup team, and there's a mentality within that team when it's a cup game that we we kind of just step up. So this has always been in the back of my mind with this. Now, 
when he made the change uh, yesterday to play Chalaba ahead of um, ahead of Aspilicueta uh, as the right centre back. Um, listen, horses for courses, different levels. As Billiquet has been on the decline for a good year, two years now, um, and kind of again riding the crest of a wave and uh, and all that kind of stuff. And that's no disrespect to As I absolutely love the guy, but I think he's just, even though he's 31, 32, this is a player who has not missed much football in his career through injury or anything. And I think he's just losing that level, that little bit of pace, and he's kind of playing in his own head. So I think. Young just, Chalaba there. He's just got an awful lot of miles in the leg. That's all. Yeah, that's 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 all it is. And it happens yeah. to the best of them. You know absolutely. what I mean? It happens to the absolute best and, and, of Ferguson. And it's, actually, it's, a, it's a testament to the guy because he's been I'm gonna so, say Ferguson you know, was always a guy who knew when a player had that mileage on his legs and knew when it was time to bring in new blood. And I think that's kind of what Tuchel is doing long term. He's looking at Chalaba and, going. And don't forget, Chalaba a great game at Anfield that day as well. That's Fantastic. Very, very good game. Fantastic. You know, um, so but it was I a think, toss up between him and Thiago Silva for the for the man of the match, if I'm right. It was, yeah. it was. And that's where I think I, I, I just think that um with Chalaba in there were a different team. And I think that confidence, as you know, a goalkeeper who is a confidence player needs that back line in front of him that you know knows that he's not going to be getting back passes because he's not great on the ball. I mean, when you look at Aspilaqueta. As soon as he gets the ball, it's back, back, backwards passing because he panics. You look at the Everton game, case in point. He passes a stupid ball back to, to Mendy, and then Mendy fucking you know concedes a goal because of it. So I think I think he's been playing a very, very uh good kind of game here, Tuchel, with kind of keeping Chalaba in reserve here. And he had a, a fantastic game, as I said last night. And I think if he goes with that back line that he played with last night. I wouldn't be as worried as I would have been, say, 24 hours ago, if that makes sense. Noel, you, you kind of answered one of the questions I was going to ask you earlier on, um, but I, I'm going to just pass it over to Ian, because you obviously spoke about Mason Mountain, and he's the guy you probably fear the most on that Chelsea side. He's the guy maybe you feel like, you know, could dictate the, the play and, the, and, the, and the, the pace of play and stuff like that. Ian, who are you most worried about on that? on that Liverpool side, is it that that Salah maybe comes back into the form that we know he can he can have and, and has done so against Chelsea quite regularly? Or is it the boy Luis Diaz who has just been, you know, phenomenal since he stepped foot in the Premier League in January? I would have said Diaz, but I am going to say Salah because he's going to be going up on the right-hand side against uh, Marcos Alonso. Marcos Alonso. And Marcus Alonso, even though he's kind of played pretty well, and and do you know what I'm gonna? Marcus Alonso has actually played very well over the last couple of games, bar like you know the, the fallout against Wolves. Um, I don't think you could have you could have expected any more from Marcus Alonso. No, but the problem is he's an attacking wing back, and depending yeah. on who he's got on, on that side helping Alonso, and um, if he does decide to slide. Uh, the boy Mace out on the on, on the left, I'd be a bit more confident because you know what you're going to get in terms of um, tracking back wise. Um, even if he went with Coy out there, I'd still be confident enough because Coy will will work his bollocks off too for you. But um, yeah, I would say I would say Salah would be more so because Diaz is going to be up against Reese James. Listen, Reese J, you know. I heard uh, I heard a Chelsea fan. I, I can't steal this one. I heard a Chelsea fan saying, "Do you remember in the in the um, what was it, the Thor movies, Loki turns around and goes, I've got an army. And then, uh, you know, the Avengers, it was the Avengers and the Avengers turned around and said, well, we've got a Hulk. <laughs> and that's kind of like what Reese James is. Like, Reese James is that big kid that plays all the little kids at like fair shoulders them, but keeps getting fouls given against them because he's just stronger and bigger. Um, so I would, be, I would be confident and very intrigued by the battle of Luis Diaz and uh, and Reese James and confident James, enough yeah. in, in James to be able to deal with it. Whereas Marcus Alonso and Salah, if Salah's on his day, like good lord, you know. And and <laughs> from it from a you know from a neutral point of view, when you don't have a card in the game or a horse in the race, that's the one I'm looking forward to most. I have to say is is that Diaz versus Reese James. 
Um, you know, because I don't He's our best that, player at the moment, by the way, without yeah, a shadow of a doubt. He is, but I, I don't think, you know, I, I think James has a, a job to do defensively at the weekend. And yeah. and if, if he tries to get, you know, too far on the front foot, I think it could hurt Chelsea. And he does tend to bring a lot of attack and threat down that right hand side. When he wasn't in the side, that fell off a little bit. And and Chelsea, the goals of Chelsea dried up a little bit. And and obviously since he's come back into the team, you know, things have kind of gone back to the way they were and he's been playing very well. But I think he's got to be careful now against Diaz because I think if you give him too much face down that left hand side, I think Diaz could do some massive damage. Noel. Well the last the last thing I'll say on that is that's why I think he's gonna go with Mace and Reese James on the right hand side because okay. that will sure that up. Do you know what I mean? I think that's that's just my personal opinion. And I'm looking at the last couple of games and thinking Tuchel's a pretty shrewd guy and he's probably looking at at that side and thinking if I can make that fucking water toy, um, that's what he's gonna go. But it's pure speculation at the moment. But I'd agree with you, Dazzler. Yeah, Diaz is is Noel. Uh, Phenomenal. Is this a slightly bigger game for Liverpool? And 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 when I say that, I obviously know Chelsea haven't lifted the trophy this season. And there's we a certain have, level that well this Two. season. I think they're they're from last season though. They're the, no. the kickback from the winning of the Champions League. Yeah. That's still encompassed in last season's I get you, I get you, yeah. but there's still two so, trophies though. Okay. They haven't lifted any domestic trophies, yeah. Fair. So with that in mind, you haven't lifted any domestic trophies. Obviously, there's a new owner on the way in the door. This is a big game for Chelsea, but from a Liverpool point of view, with the with the City in the West Ham game coming up on Sunday, you guys having Southampton during the week and having the Champions League final in, you know, sort of two weeks' time. Do you have to keep the ball rolling here? Could a defeat to Chelsea really derail your season? I, I'm not too sure. I mean, obviously, when you get to a final, you want to win it. I mean, you only have X amount of opportunities every year to win silverware. So when you get to a final, you want to win it. Um, but the Champions League for us it, it is really the key one in terms of if you look back on a successful season. I think if we finish out with only two domestic trophies, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming at this stage, even though it's hanging by a thread, I think the title race is done. I think Liverpool themselves believe the title race is done, but they're not being vocal about it. I think Klopp thinks the title race is done, but he's not being vocal about it. I don't think we can peg back that amount of goal difference. I don't think we can expect them to drop that amount of points. I don't see them, whatever about getting beaten by West Ham potentially, I don't see the result that Aston, I don't see the Aston Villa going up there and getting the result that we think could happen. I looked at Aston Villa the other night against us. I thought for about 35 minutes they were okay. And I thought for the final, at least the final of the second half, I thought they, they were shocking. They wilted and faded away. Um, really struggling. They've had a tough hour, long season and stuff like that, you know. So, But I think in, ter- in terms of this, I think, look, you get to an FA Cup final. It's the romance of it. You want to win it. It's the oldest cup in the history of the game and stuff like that. And you want to put it in your cabinet. So we'll, we'll be going hell for leather to try and win this. We won't, we won't be taking our eye off the ball. I don't think our Roy will be going to Southampton. I think, if anything, our Roy would be going towards the Champions League final. Because, um, like I said, if we don't land, we're, it doesn't look like now we're going to land the Premier League, so we have to try and land the Champions League. Otherwise, I think it w- we will look back on not necessarily a disappointing season, but a season that sort of flattered to the save, if you like, because we've been on this roller coaster ride we've taken it as deep as we can into trying to land the quadruple, even though we don't like talking about it much, but we've tried our best to pull it as far as we can. We've, we, we've been competitive with city all season. And quite frankly, in the last three seasons, if you look at a part of the season where we had all the injuries, not dissimilar to Chelsea this season, you know, I think if Liverpool isn't up there fighting against Man City, I think we're in danger of the league becoming like the French league. You know what I mean? We've can, been... I, can I actually say something in Liverpool's favour here? It's not yeah. often I do that because of the banter. So I was going to say, hold on, I just time and date this in. I'm going to yeah. get the red pen out for this bit. Go on ahead. We'll clip no it. No problem. No problem. Uh, sorry, that was it. I was just going to say. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> sorry, mate. I forgot. I forgot what I was going to say. No, um, Listen, the fact that Liverpool have done that and, and the model that they have built 
And the fact that we've kind of got owners that want to build on that same kind of model, of course, they're going to spend money, obviously a lot of money this year to kind of, you know, give them, I suppose, the foundation that they want to build on going forward. And, um, you know, I'd be, I'd be kind of uh, hypocritical if I was to say, oh yeah, we've got new money, new blood, blah, 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 blah. However, if you look at what City have done versus what Liverpool have done, they're not exactly always analytical about it. They get Pep whatever he wants. Do you know what I mean? Um, pretty much every year. The only time that someone said no to uh, to Pep was was that little baldy conscience last year, of course, and he kept Harry Kane. And obviously they got the hoof over that. Um, they got the hump over that. But what Liverpool have done is, is absolutely, you know, very, very admirable um, because you built this over the course of years. Yes, people could go, what, 75? Was it, what was it, 75 or 85 million for, for Van Dijk? But it was the one 70. signing. 70 million. So, yeah. But it was the one signing. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's big signings here and there to fit into a system that allows the manager to, to build his team. And I think the fact that Liverpool have done that and have remained so competitive over the last couple of seasons with, with City and went toe-to-toe with them when nobody else could is, is absolutely, you know, admirable. And, and regardless of what, you know, whether I'm a Liverpool fan or not, or you know what I mean? Uh, listen, all my best mates are Liverpool Man United fans, so I'd have no friends if I was to fuck Paul out, which is over that. But no, I think... I think Liverpool should not, absolutely not hang their heads in shame. The fact that if you lose by a point, you lose by two points. If you lose in goal difference, like it's 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 an absolute job well done to Liverpool, to Klopp, to the owners, and to the to the team. So there yeah, you go. I, I, I think I suppose Darren, before you come back in, the the, the problem yeah. with it really is three out of four seasons will probably potentially rack up ninety plus points. And we yeah, only and have and we'll only have one lead yeah. to show for it. Only and, one in, and that's and that's the frustrating team. In in any other era, that's three league titles. In reality, but do you remember? Do you yeah. remember when Mourinho said that thing as well? I hand it over back to you, Dazzler. Remember when uh, Mourinho obviously had won the league that year with Chelsea when he came back, and he was like, "How are you meant to compete with these like with this Saudi money or whatever they're from? Dubai, the fuck." Um, you know, a team, the one team in the world along with PSG that never get investigated. By the way, I'll just throw that out there. Um, you, you'd love, you'd love to, you well, know, we know that's it. not true, but anyway, well, they, they've never, they've never been sanctioned for or you know, the ban- okay, trans- but they have been investigated, yeah, yeah, but there was no transfer ban or anything like that, was there? Well, then what evidence was found? I well, think the evidence that's found leads to what happens rather than the investigate well, not happening. Well, that, so that's that's pending. I'd say, you know, that's that's pending. I'd say watch that space over the next five years, considering the what they've done now recently. Um, but anyway, um, like if you remember, Mourinho said, "Look, how are you meant to compete against these guys? They went out and bought four new fullbacks for like almost fifty million a piece. Do you know what I mean? Like you don't see Liverpool or you know even United. I know United have spent probably the most money over over the course of the last." 10 years and 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 Daz, you, you would say probably not wisely, but if you had a had like the right, I suppose, um director of football and you know working in sync with a manager, then it w- we'd have a different conversation. But City can just do that. That's why I think the Liverpool model is so fucking impressive. And um, that they can just like Luis Diaz, you know what I mean? Boom. We know people want them. Let's get them where we can at the price. Let's pull the trigger. Boom, he's arrows now. Simple. So yeah, it's, it's it's clever what they've done, you know. It really very is. clever. It is very clever. Um, I've got two bits to finish off with, lads. Yeah. So first of all, I'm going to ask you both the same question here. There's 120 minutes on the clock on Saturday evening. Noel, are you hoping he takes Mendy out? Um, that won't happen again. <laughs> I. You could you could hope, but I, I don't think it will happen. The, the other thing I would say in, in, in defense of Kepa as well, I think if he did do it, I think I suppose with Kepa, he probably has to look at himself because whatever shit housery he tried to deploy in the Carabao Cup, it backfired on him big time. And um, but I don't I don't think I don't think a keeper, I don't think you should have a keeper in your team 
that's more suited to penalties. And if you have a keeper there that's brought you 120 minutes, he shouldn't be hooked. And remember, we're talking about a keeper that was hooked, that won an AFCON on a penalty shootout. You know what I mean? So you have to allow for that as well. So, look, I, I don't really... It doesn't really bother me, really, what Chelsea do in terms of that and stuff like that. I don't see that happening again. Well, I think would, it not have, be, would it not be a positive from Liverpool's point of view that you've already beaten this lad in a, in a, in a penalty shootout? You know, would it not be a psychological edge as opposed to you having Mendy, who we know is a much bigger goalkeeper, who has a much bigger presence? I don't think, Darren, I don't think it really matters. You have Kepa, who generally is a decent penalty stopper. You have Mendy in there, who's a bigger keeper. So it's a flip of a coin, really. It's a penalty shootout. It doesn't really well, I matter. Spoke, I spoke on the, on the, uh, at the Carabao Cup final myself, and, and, yeah. and you know, I get the whole, he's a, he's a penalty specialist. I don't think you could take a bloke out of goal the size of uh, Mendy because I just think, you know, from 12 yards, if you if you can fill the goal with as much body mass as possible, it makes things a whole lot more difficult for the penalty takers. And I think that's where Tuchel fell down on this. Ian, what do you think has happened? Yeah, well, but no, I, again, I don't, I don't see that. Um, happening again, I think. You don't see lightning striking twice. No, no, no. So then, so then it's going to be down to does it get that far? And, and that's where I'm going to ask you for your prediction. So, Ian, I'm going to go to you first. Talk to me. Give me a prediction for the weekend. Obviously, I'm wearing the blue of Chelsea, so I'm not going to go against my team because that would be stupid. Um, but also, I do firmly believe, like what Niall alluded to earlier. I think, um, I think on, on on you know a one-off game, this is the two teams just match well, and we have done over the course of history. So um, difficult but, to separate them, even this season. It's so difficult to separate. Them. You know what? Even in the nineties, Noel, it was so difficult. I mean, like you know, it's that famous Gronkjaer goal. It was a two-one game. You know, like it's very rare. What you could pick one game where there was a bit of a what one game over the last thirty years. Well, tw- yeah, probably thirty years where there was a bit of a of a hammer in that Anfield, and I think it was your biggest one was four-one. Do you remember that? Mm. Like, yeah. but but that was freak. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't something that that happened a lot. Um, so I'm going to go two-one Chelsea. In 90 minutes or 120? I'm going to go 90, yeah. Noel? Well, that'll tell you how close it is because I'm 2 1 Liverpool in 90 minutes. Yeah. And I just, I just can't, I, I find it really difficult to separate this because, Darren, you alluded earlier too about the defense and stuff like that. You spoke to Ian about Chelsea's defense. We haven't kept a clean sheet in three games, which is so unusual for us going into this final. So can I, can unusual. I, can I say something, Noel? With 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 um like I think it's ironclad that Lukaku is going to come in. Obviously, in and that's only the last two three games. You know, Klopp would have been looking at maybe a Koi, right? How do we? Your two centre backs can bully Koi. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I mean Koi will be up for the fight, but you can bully him. You can knock him off the ball. If you get like a a, a purple fucking purple patch. Lukaku, who is in form, who does want to play on the shoulder, and you get the right balls to him. And we know that, that as you've said it, he, he's one of the best strikers in world football when he's playing on the shoulder and does that turn, and he can roll you for fun if he's on it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's it. The, only, the only thing I'll, I'll put up against that is he's going to find it a lot more difficult rolling at Konate or a no, Mandu- I get that. He is. I, I get you know, that. I'm not saying. I'm not saying that because last, generally, when he's rolling boys, they're they're a little bit smaller. No, than he in, is, and in no way, him. shape, or form. I don't am think I he buddies, I don't no, think he buddies either, the lads. Does he? No, no. In, I'm not saying that. Well, look, there was a couple of there, there was a couple of moments there at Anfield where it was uh, early in the season when he was on form, where him and fucking Van Dijk had a couple of battles. They both kind of knocked each other off the ball at certain times, and it was actually really interesting to watch. So, I'm, in no way, shape, or form, I'm saying he's going to bully either the boys. But even even the game there, like you look at the three goals, you know, it was his actual interplay again. Do you know what I mean? The little flicks he was doing, it was like, okay, this is the fucking Inter Milan striker we apparently thought we were getting. So all I'm saying is, and that's why I answered your question earlier, what which player needs to step up? 
So in no way, shape or form am I fickle enough to go, yes, Lukaku is 100% back now after three games. No. Um, but what I'm saying is it gives Klopp a different thing to think about. That's all I'm saying. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, we probably thought we were getting the, the, the Werner, Coy, Mount treatment. Now yeah, we've and, and, and I suppose, is there a, is there a case for, for Tuchel um, to, to maybe play Lukaku and, ha- and play Mount and Havertz often? I personally, is that's the one I, I would go for. Um, I know Pulisic's been in form a little bit. Um, I I personally and would go with put, three in midfield and try and or go with the two when you have your wing backs yeah. then and create the space down yeah. the outside. Yeah, that's 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 the role I'd go for because I think Coy is a workhorse. He's a big boy as well. He's six foot three. He is strong enough, in fairness, but he is a workhorse. And um, so that's 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 what I'm thinking he might go with because yeah, Coy Pul- is a very Pul- smart player. You know what I mean as well. Yeah, Pulisic Pul- Pul- will come from the bench if anywhere. Yeah, he's, he's that's not what I'll bring impact on that left hand side maybe. And and maybe yeah. try and get at Trent in the last yeah. in the in the dying embers of the game, lads. This has been our FA Cup preview. I gotta say it was a uh, it was great getting in here into this position and 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 sitting in between. I was like the ice cream in between two wafers here. In the boot. In the boot. Um, I'm looking in between the two in between the two OG podcasters and you fucking you you fit in just perfectly. There you Slot go. In. Like the perfect DM, just controlling the play. We'll, uh, for I have to say, for the, from a neutral point of view, I'm really looking forward to the game. Um, really, really looking forward to the game. Might even just break out a nice little bottle of Scottish something or other, and you know, have a little tipple as I as I watch it. Not to worry about uh, anyone picking up any injuries or anything like that, because my team aren't playing. So, you know, we'll be playing the LDV Vans Trophy final next year, hopefully. If we can, well, I hope the there is no injuries because if you watch a game like last night, like dirty leads, good lord, I don't think you'll 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 find I don't think you'll find either team going out to uh, to hurt their opposition uh, number. Oh, it'll be fe- it'll be feisty and it'll be a battle as it always is, but it'll be it'll be fair in the spirit of the game, and and we hope that the referee will be where it should be for a, a game of this way? magnitude. I don't know. I haven't looked up the referee. Yet. I haven't looked yeah, it up. Check. We'll have to uh, pop that in the comments down below. Mm-hmm. Just for anyone listening to us again, guys, don't forget you'll get us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, the upper tier, and you'll get us on Spotify, Google Podcast, and Amazon Music. This is our FA Cup final preview. Lads, thanks for watching. Whoa, 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 hang on. You're not getting off that easy. Give us your prediction. You're not going to be allowed to just sit back on Saturday unless you give us your prediction. Give you my prediction. 3-2 Liverpool after extra time. Well, that's what I said in the Premier League preview. That's what I'm sticking to. You're sticking to it. Yeah, sorry, you know. Noel has all his boys working for him now, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <Don't worry>. <laughs> <laughs> will be red, hopefully. Um, <laughs> well, the we will, the, anyway, don't, so. don't, don't forget Saturday evening. We'll be back for a match reaction. We will. Which will and be, I'll be and I'll be hosting again. Yeah, and one of us is going to have our Snapchat crying face <laughs> filter on, that's for sure. No doubt about it. I'm coming on with a fucking clava if that's the case. <laughs> listen, all, all I can say to my brother down there in the blue from the Chelsea Roar is listen, good luck. I hope it's a good match. And look, hopefully the best team wins and it's not down to a stupid referee or a VARD. Best, best of luck as well uh, to you too. And as I said, um, you know, the one the one area where, where, where Dazzler failed to, to host today was. Uh, uh, to mention my my uh, channel, if you want to catch us on the Chelsea Roar, you can uh, follow us on Twitter at the Chelsea Roar or on the Chelsea Roar on YouTube and uh, on Instagram, Facebook, everything. Just type in Chelsea Roar and you'll catch us there. Um, when, you're, when you're looking for the Chelsea Roar, don't forget, get the magnifying glasses out. It can be hard to find at times, but don't worry, you know. We're going to growl after you, pal. Don't you worry. Hang on. Well, no, real, well, no real, it's, real, it's all right, Dazzler. You're, you're on the back of my hard work, so don't worry about it. Real, real <laughs> real has it, real has it, Darren. It was easy to find last night on Twitter uh, during hosting, spa- uh, hosting spaces, I heard. Was it? I heard there was big attendance as well. I heard there was attendance out there. Okay. A lot of London Blue boys were on last night, I heard. Uh, he, was was a ma- he, he was amassing the troops. i tell you one thing. I got some... Uh, I got some some good boys and some shady boys <laughs> last night. <laughs> and and uh, it was like when you get a blender 
and you just put them all in there and you just go, right, lads, go toe to toe and I'll just sit back. <laughs> I was on the shitter at one point and I was just like, this is great fun. <laughs> lads, it was a pleasure having you. Thanks very much. Cheers, Thank pal. you. Take it easy.